are now. Here is a thought for the day and it's on behalf of Larbert Baptist Church. In the Acts of the Apostles and chapter 1 and verse 8 we ha have the words of our Saviour before his ascension. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the world. With that, according to Luke in Acts 1, that was it. The Saviour was lifted from them. They watched him go and, well, disappear in a cloud. And the Saviour is preparing us, preparing the disciples, yes, and us, for the last days, that is, the days from the ascension of Christ to the second coming. The Apostle Paul speaks of this in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews in Hebrews 1 verse 2. James in his epistle chapter 5 verse 3. The Apostle Peter in 1 Peter 1 and 2 Peter 3. The Apostle John in 1 John chapter 2 verse 18 and Jude in verse 18 they all speak of the last days and the Saviour is preparing us because in the last days perilous times will come. The darkness is fierce. It is merciless. It is intolerant of any contradiction. It is powerful to present a case. It is solid in its force of support. It is absolute in what is made to look like a logical argument. It is universal in destroying the last element of light, the last days. And the Saviour is preparing us for and with and by the Holy Spirit coming upon us. And the Saviour prepares us in three ways. First, by the grace of God 
within us. The Holy Spirit is preparing us for the world's hatred, the world's persecution, the world's tribulation. And the Holy Spirit makes it beautifully clear to the believer the indwelling presence of God. Cha John chapter 14, 16 to 17. He makes it plain that the indwelling home of God is in the heart. John chapter 14, verse 23. He makes it plain that the empowering of the abiding love of God is our continual assurance. John 15 verse 9 He shows us that sin and righteousness and judgment the three elements that are dismissed by the world that sin and righteousness and judgment are profoundly important. John 16, 8 to 25. The Holy Spirit prepares us through the dark night to the bright morning that is coming. John 16, verse 23. And now, of course, the Holy Spirit has always performed these wonderful ministrations to the believing heart. It isn't that there's something new about it, except that the Holy Spirit is fortifying us in the perilous times of the last days. Every virtue we possess and every victory won and every thought of holiness are his alone. That's always been the case, always. But with profound wisdom, the Holy Spirit is preparing us inwardly for the perilous times that come. Secondly, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is to equip us in our ministry. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be my witnesses, says the Saviour. It is the empowering of the Holy Spirit within us. You will be brought, said the Saviour, you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to those and to the Gentiles but when they deliver you up, do not worry about 
how or what you should speak, for it will be given you in that hour what you should speak, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of the Father who speaks in you. It is a, an extraordinary thing that when a man or a woman is actually in the will of God, whatever the world thinks, there is sufficiency in the explanation that the believer gives for the sufficiency of the case. Thirdly, by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is beyond the power of humanity. This is how the Saviour put it in John chapter 3, verse 8. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes to. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. This simple fact, I mean it is a fact, has magnificent reference to the truth of the indwelling Holy Spirit. World leaders have power. World leaders have confidence in their power. World leaders have assertive assurance in the origin and progress and achievement of their purpose. But they have no power over the wind. They may stretch themselves to defend against the assault of the blast. They may secure their property in the storm. They may, be, they may build defences. They may give warnings. They may marshal rescue plans. But they have no power over the wind. They have no authority against its terrific force. Their authority stops short at this immensity. It cuts through legislation and it severs every device to prevent it. It cuts through everything that we can imagine the wind of its origin, of its destination, of its prevailing power is beyond every last syllable of our contrast. The wind, it is supreme. Ah, oh, so is the power of the Spirit. This is a stricken world, and we are servants to that power. 
that omnipotence of God may reach into the darkness and we are emboldened to declare the saving work, the saving grace, the saving efficiency of God the Spirit. For the last days, I mean, for these days, We need the power of God the Spirit. We have no power of our own. But in Jesus Christ, we have the power of the Spirit for the fulfillment of the work of God the Father. There's a thought for the day. God bless you. Good night.